So what I like about this graphic organizer is that it's showing that there has to be two different versions of this absolute value of x is equal to 3. Whenever we're solving absolute value equations, our goal is to get the absolute value isolated. In this case, it already is. Once the absolute value is isolated, you rewrite it with a positive version and a negative version. And what would that look like on a number line? And we're just going to fill those in with solid dots, showing that only negative 3 and positive 3 could make this inequality true, or this um, absolute value true. I'm going to take a moment and go back to our homework problem from yesterday, because we didn't take the moment to graph this. Both of these are negative numbers, true? Yes. And they're both fractions. So if I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Where would you put negative 2 and 3 fifths? Well, if I think about this as broken up into fifths, 1, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, or any another one. I should have spread this out better. But 2 and 3 fifths would be 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 fifths would be at the 3, wouldn't it? Because that would be another whole. So this negative 2 and 3 fifths is here. And where would negative 2, 3 and 2 fifths be? It would be about here. So when we're dealing with equal signs, we're just putting dots on the actual number that shows up for both versions when we solve it. What do you think is going to happen with our next example here then? Once I start going with these and I realize I'm going to graph them, I like to put the negative version on the left side and the positive version on the right. Why do you think I like to do that as a visual person? Because negative is going to the left. Yeah, on the graph, the negative is going to go on the left and the positive is going to go on the... So when I started graphing this, my brain was like, don't mix them up, don't mix them up, because they're opposite of what I really want to see. If I put them this way, which it doesn't really matter. This isn't like a flip-flop thing. This is just me telling you how my brain works as a visual person. I like knowing that the negative is going to be here and the positive is going to be here. And it makes it pretty simple to graph it. Try doing the last one on your own. And hopefully yours looks something like mine. So these are nice and easy when the absolute value is already isolated, true? Let's open it up and see some other examples. Okay, these are a little bit different. The absolute value is still already isolated, but what's different about it is that the x is not isolated inside the absolute value. True? So we did a couple like this yesterday. Let's just show it. Notice the boxes are bigger, because once we've taken and made our negative version and our positive version, we're going to have a little bit more work to do. x minus 1 is equal to negative 2. I have no idea if that's going to stay on the left or not. x minus 1 is equal to positive 2. See why these two arrows can be helpful? Make sure that one of them is negative and the other one is. Okay. So what am I going to do to both of these uh, these equals? Um, blah, I can't speak to both of these equations. Yeah. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add it here and here and here and here. 
On the left side of my equation for both of these, I have the x isolated. On the right side, I get negative 1 for the first equation. And on the right side of the second equation, I get x is equal to positive 3. Don't be crazy about your graphs. You really just need the two numbers on there. But make them look correct. If I put this 3 here, would that look like a, a valid graph? No. Can you see that I visually kind of left spaces for the 1 and the 2? Just don't take the time to put them in. You really don't need them. Okay? Try to set up the second one on your own. Does your setup look like mine? Did anybody put the 10 on the left and the negative 10 on the right? It doesn't really matter, right? And honestly, as we start solving these, even my brain doesn't think ahead to see what will the negative stay a negative. Sometimes when we add things to it, or it could change. But in this case, we're going to subtract 3 from everything, yes? Yes. And x is going to be equal to negative 13. And x is equal to what? Seven. Seven. There's my non scientific quick version of a graph. I want you guys to think back a couple weeks ago when we made this. Do you guys remember this? Mm -hmm. yeah. The main reason I included equal on this, where we were just showing that it equals a dot, was thinking ahead to these. Because it's just two places on the graph, and we want to show if there's an equal sign, we only put that place. In this case, because they're in, or, um, absolute values, I don't want to say inequalities, because they're absolute values, there's two versions. That goes back to our essential question from yesterday, right? They typically end up with two answers. Let's try the last one. I get x minus 12 is equal to Sure, let's put negative 14. And x minus 12 is equal to positive 14. What am I going to do with those 12s? I'm going to add them. Our goal now is to get that x isolated. And x in this case is equal to negative 2. And in this case, it's equal to positive. 26. Oops, 26. You're right. I said 28. I was thinking four times two in my head. Okay. I'm going to make my graph a little different. I'm going to put the zero here and the negative two here and the 26 way over here. Does zero have to go right in the middle of every graph we do? No. Does it make sense to see the way I set this one up? Yes. Where are we feeling? Having tried this yesterday and now seeing this graphic organizer, are we mostly feeling pretty good about this? Feels easy. Okay. The next one, we do not have the absolute value isolated. In the first case, this absolute value is with a positive 3. So what are we going to do with that positive 3? We're going to first subtract it. Notice this box is bigger because it's indicating we need to do something up here before we separate them. And then we get the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 2. Now we have our absolute value isolated. And because it's isolated, 
we can do our positive version and our negative version. What's my next action? I'm going to add the two. What is my first x equal? Negative 2, positive 2 is equal to? Zero. Yeah. And then in this case, x is equal to? Four. So my graph is pretty simple. 0, 4. Last example, what do we want to do first? Is that what you're going to say? So we're going to add the 3 to both sides of the equal sign. I get absolute value of 2x minus 1 by itself is now equal to 5. The absolute value is isolated, so we can make our positive version and our negative version. So I'm going to get 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 5. There's no trick to me not doing the negative. It's just I'm writing in pen and I didn't make that a negative 5. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. doesn't matter what order. Next step is... Add the one. Plus one, plus one. I get two x equals six, and two x equals negative four. Are we finished? No. Now we need to divide by two. Zero and six. X equals three and x equals negative 2. I wrote too big of my rectangles there. We did a good error. We were just too early. Negative 2.